Hi, welcome to Crafted Sweetly. I'm Diana. Thanks so much for being here. In this video, I wanted to do a project showing you a design that I'm doing with the photo edge, with the photo book art, but using my diagonal ruler. Before I get into the actual project, I want to show you how many lines you can actually, or score lines you can actually create using this. So I'm using just an, a book that I like to test things on, so it's not an actual project book, but I wanted to show you. So it has this line that's here, but I don't usually use this for anything because it's, I have the other rulers for this. I mean, you could, if you really wanted to, and I'm using a pen just to show you the actual score lines for this. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see wrong way. So you can see that part a little better. All right, so what I do with this is I'm holding it almost like the Incra ruler. I want to make sure that this is flush with the book here. Okay, so if it's flush here with the book, then I put apply pressure on top to make sure that this doesn't shift and I will draw a line. Now this is pretty thin. I think it would be pretty, you know, again, I'm using a pen just to in show you the lines, not actual score lines, but this would, you know, you can certainly do something if it's that much. Now to, I think it would be hard to keep this down, but that is a possible score line. You can't really go far with this because it, this distance is short. So I think this book is about 21 centimeters or a little less. So it wouldn't work for books that are 23 centimeters. I use the, my uh, 180 rulers that are like this to create those score lines. All right, now it's, I'm more interested in the diagonal lines to show you for this. So if you hold your diagonal score guide right flush with the book here, I'm holding this in place and I will draw the lines that you can create against this. Oh, let's see if I can get all the way in right there. You could go against this slat. Now you do want to make sure you're pressing down on it so it doesn't shift. This particular one here is a little thinner, like narrower. So you want to make sure that you're holding it down so it doesn't shift if you do use it there. All these were made with the ruler flush. So you can see how many lines you can create, how many score lines you can have. Now, if I change this and I, let me see if I have a pen, I might be able to get this, is this red? It is, okay. Let's see if it fits in there so I can show you this. Now, this was flush against the book. If you decide to move it farther down, you can certainly do that. Now, the only thing is you, you, what you would probably want to do is add some tape, maybe even um, just blue tape to make sure you're always at the same position, starting line, basically with the ruler. So if my ruler, I'm just using some painter's tape here. If you don't want this angle and you want to change the angle of the, the line, then you want to always be sure, you know, you're not using the book as a guide. You want to add this on here and then you always want to line the edge of the book up with this right there. So now I'm always going to use the blue tape as my guide for this. Now all the lines will change all of a sudden because I've moved the diagonal lines down. Okay, so now it's here and I'll use the red pen so you can see the distance. Now this obviously you're not going to be able to use because it's a very short distance, which means, you know, you can use it for a smaller book, I suppose. I don't know if this will make it in because my pen is too thick. Oh, I did make it in. Okay. Again, you want to make sure you're holding this down so it doesn't shift. Same thing. Uh, uh, something like this, which is what I use to score, 
would obviously fit in between these openings. With the pen it's a little harder but I just wanted you to see the lines. That's what I'm trying to show you the distance, the difference between them. So as you can see my red lines, some of them are slightly, you know, could be about the same but the angle might be different or a little farther away because you've shifted this from here down to here. Okay, so that's that's going to be different. Now all these, one more thing and then I'll get into the project, is if I do all the lines this way for diagonal and I'm folding this, let's say this way, when you grab the book all your lines will be, or your image that you're applying, so let's assume I've already folded all these, let me zoom back out so you can see what I'm talking about, all these would be kind of like up at the top and then farther in at the bottom. So if you're looking at it, depending on your design, you could certainly create a vase that way where it's tapered at the bottom and then you know you have all this opening at the top. But what I'm doing for my project, I am actually going to start at the back of the book. So my book is going to be this way and it's upside down so that I can this way so instead of it having the other way I flip it around and I'm doing all of them this way so that once the book is done my taper is to, uh, towards the top of the book not the bottom and that'll make more sense once I actually start the project but I wanted to show you how many lines you can create using this diagonal tool and I do have it in my Etsy shop I have a limited run at the moment of them but um, I will be having more available if um, those sell out. All right, so I will start off with, I'll move this out of the way for a second. We don't need this pan. And get my cutter pillar up here. The book I already started, but I wanted to show you what I'm doing with it. So this is the pattern. I use this, I created the pattern using photobookart.com and this is with the ink saver option. And as you can see, I've, I've mentioned that I've done, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many pages, but I've done quite a few pages already. But I still have the first page of my pattern. So one through 19 pages are still here. That's because I started on the back of the pattern. So I'm going backwards with everything, okay? And the way I cut the strips is I'll cut the top, the bottom. You can mark the back so you don't get confused if it's an intricate pattern. You can also leave the bottoms on. I've done it quite a few different ways throughout my videos. I keep changing technique to see what works best. But I usually do take this off because I want that to be even everywhere. And then what I love about the cutter pillar is that it does have a light right there. You can see the light which helps with the scoring of these pieces. I used to score this by hand on a score pal. Now um, after seeing someone else, a viewer or somebody in another Facebook group, they use the edge of the paper cutter to create a score line on here, which makes it easier to then fold. So as you work on books, you'll find that you change techniques. You'd find other people posting different ways of creating things. So, you know, obviously we're in this group to learn from each other and I'm happy to share, you know, what I learn seeing others do if that makes more sense than what I explained previously but anyway I'll I just got three pages I mean three strips here and I have one more right here which I'll probably get it okay there we go so I'll set this aside and I will get back to the book part and I used to fold these down uh, with a um, folding tool 
and then realized probably don't need to get that crease that worked fine but kind of to speed up the process um, I saw one of Suzanne's videos and she had this really fast process of getting it done so I thought well I will try it and it works great um, numbers I'm starting with the larger numbers first so I have one strip there this is the highest number and then the next two numbers and this process works great you know pretty nice crease like I said, you, you learn from others and that's why I love to share, you know, we're always learning. So these are my next three plus one that I have there. Okay, so let me get the book under here and I'll show you what I'm doing. And then I'll show you what I've done so far. So I'll take the the 180 marker, but again, now this is the diagonal one, not the regular one. You want to make sure the spine is forward so that this is 90 degrees. This has a little lip on it right there, a 90 degree angle. So you're going to place this on top of the book. And what I'm, as you can see, I'm, my book is upside down because I'm starting from the back. I'm going to put this down on it. I want to make sure this side is flush because that's how I did the other pages. And then I'm going to use my scoring tool to score right here. And I am applying pressure at the top to make sure it doesn't shift. Okay, so I have that. Now this gets folded over. So this is what all of them will look like. Okay. This is the bottom of the book. That's the top, as you can see the pages, and that's because I've started from the back of the book. I always start from the front, but in this case, it's from the back. So I'll do a couple pages, and then I'll show you what I have so far. Usually I'll score maybe 10 pages, and then apply the strips and then go back and repeat the process. Okay, so I have three pages. You'll get the idea from that. Same thing, make sure this is folded over. See, it's perfect. They line up. Love the 180 marker idea because then you're always even where you're folding things right there okay so now i have this strip is from got turned around here okay and then what i do is i use double-sided tape and to make sure that this stays down i do add just a little bit of tape right there and it is just a dot just enough to hold it in place so that you can work easier when you're adding the the strips same thing with this same thing as if you're doing the edge but now you're working at an angle with it so i'll take the strip and i want to make sure that the top of the book on this side this time is the strip is right at the top press it down and then make sure that the strip is always all the way against the book and then this part gets trimmed off because it's at an angle you'll have this little tail now when you're creating the photo book art pattern usually you enter the height of the book into the program for this what you have to do is once you decide how deep of an angle you want whoops wrong way you know whether you're using this one or this one whichever one you end up using you want to make sure that you're measuring this part so you're going to take the ruler and measure this for the height that you're going to enter into the program if you enter this then your strips will be short okay and this pattern i will list in my etsy shop but i will list it for this which 
I'll, I'll, I guess I'll note in the listing what the height of my book is and then it's based on this um, line as far as my ruler but as long as you fold this to the distance then it should work fine all right make sure I get the next high number and the other strip I had like right now I have a much bigger end to trim off the strip that I had there I had already taken the numbers at the bottom off so there wasn't that much to take off so that's definitely important that you figure out which line you want to use make an actual score line and fold the page and then measure this so that you know what to enter into the program to create the pattern otherwise the pattern will be too short so this is another thing you can do if you buy a pattern and the pattern is longer than the book that you have this is an option where you fold the page and then all of a sudden the height of your book is longer because right now if I take this and put it on here see that's gonna be too long so depending on pattern you can trim that off or you can fold the page and then have the entire thing as part of your book all right so I've done a few strips and as I usual with my videos I'll show you my progress so far um, I can probably check in about three quarters of the way to show you and then of course when the project is done so front of the book is right here and then this is what it looks like so far so you can see the angle of the design and what's nice with this is when it's sitting on a shelf you can actually you know it's not straight up and down it's more at an angle so you have a nice visual with it okay so I'll continue the project here and then like I said I'll check in when I'm you know not quite at the end maybe I'll do another third of the book here and show you the, the progress so far at this point I just wanted to pop in and show you the progress so far um, again started from the back of the book and working my way towards the front I have this much left but this is the progress so far and as you can see it it's at a nice angle so that when you're looking at it it's not straight on you know you've got a little bit of an angle to it but this is so far I'll do a couple more pages here just to show you again I use the diagonal scoring tool and I folded this and I usually I've been gluing these down just so they stay down probably no need but it just makes it a little bit easier and then I just apply the double-sided tape top and bottom and add my strip oops I want to make sure that the strip is all the way at the top of the book because that's my guide to make sure that it's even and also against the edge of the page and then this gets trimmed off right there so that's one more page but just wanted to pop in for a second so once I'm finished I'll show you the finished design and then of course I'll have this pattern available in my Etsy shop and now for the final design here it is pretty cool I love how it turned out and this I probably will add my stabilizing uh, cardboard at the bottom and I have a video for that if you're interested um, it was a little more challenging as I got towards the end of the book in this direction because I started in the back so it was a little more challenging getting these last pages folded to a diagonal but I did get it to work in the end so if you have any questions please comment below I will post this pattern in my Etsy shop and I'll post it based on the height that I used for the book here so um, I don't remember exactly what the height was but I will use it for this now if you're not doing a diagonal like I did using this then you will just need to make sure you have a book with that height for it 
there's a little bit of room to trim off here or here if you need to but uh, I'll post the pattern in the Etsy shop if you would like to make this. Again if you have any questions please comment below um, and I'll also have the tool in the Etsy shop. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next project.